Welcome to the live Bible study hosted by Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College. Tonight, you'll learn truths from the Word with believers around the globe. Submit any questions you have in the comments and share this broadcast tonight with your friends. Good morning for us. Uh, wherever you are, welcome to our Wednesday morning uh, Karis Daily Live Bible Study, or I'm not sure I got those words in the right order. <laughs> this is new for us. This is only our second week of doing a daily live Bible study, and uh, during this quarantine, we've, I've, it's me, I have just learned the benefit of doing these Zoom meetings and stuff, and we've had so many people watching that we decided to do this on a daily basis, yeah. and we stagger the times so that we can accommodate people all around the world or in the United States. This is early morning, so this will work for a lot of people on the uh, East Coast, West Coast, and it'll just be awesome. And another thing we're doing is using all of our different instructors from Karis Bible College so that this won't just be me teaching. My night that I'll typically be there is Tuesday night, and then we're having all of these other instructors. So today we've got Daniel Amstutz with us, and man, yeah. Daniel and I go way back. We've known each other back when we were kids. <laughs> Long time. That's a it, lot it, of years. It's been what, 30 years or more? It, yeah, I think so, yeah. It's awesome. And anyway, Daniel runs all of our praise and worship at Karis and, and a worship track, and he just is a blessing. He runs our healing school every Thursday afternoon, and it's awesome. So he's going to be doing our Bible study, but before that, I'll turn it over to yes. Carrie Pickett, and she and her husband are the vice presidents of our ministry, and she's going to tell you how you can get involved. Today. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. It's bright and early here in Colorado, so I hope you're having a great day already. So what we're going to do is, um, what makes this so powerful, it is live, and so whatever form that you are watching on, just go down to your chat section, and you're actually going to be able to ask questions of Daniel today. And so we're going to try to get through as many many of those questions as possible. So every, every day we're doing this so you can ask questions. And so that makes it really powerful. It's just so things that you're going through, you can get some answers from the word of the Lord. Plus also we have our uh, helps minister standing by. So all of our prayer ministers, they are ready for to help you pray uh, if you're going through anything. So 719-635-1111. So if you have any prayer requests and also as we're talking, as Daniel's talking, if you're saying, hey, I'd like to know more about that, you can also find out if there's any material that Andrew also has on that subject so that you can grow uh, stronger and better. And so that's going to be a really awesome tool uh, for you to do. And then tomorrow night, Thursday night, we have Rob Finsky. He's our director of our Australia location. So he's going to be with us tomorrow night. So we invite you to be a part of this daily Bible study. Again, like Andrew said, it, we've crafted it so that it fits your schedule, whatever your schedule might be. So amen. And it be awesome. It's going to be awesome. And so, Daniel, when did we first meet? I think it must have been when you were in Greeley. It was in Greeley. I think it was actually in 1979 when we first met. And I met you through Dave Duell. Yeah. And I remember hearing you teach and how profound the revelation was, but how practical it was at the same time. And that was the thing that just really drew me to you. It was like this guy not only teaches from revelation, but it's something you can actually use on a daily basis. Amen. So anyway, we got to know each other way back then. You were yeah. also music director for Bob Yandian. Yes. He's a good friend of mine. He teaches at the Bible College. And Daniel actually went with me. I remember going to Atlanta. I think we were at the Omni Hotel. We were, yes. And it was a room that seated, I'd, I'd say at least 400, maybe 500 or yeah. more. Mm -hmm. And what did we have? I think oh, it was man. like 10. Yeah, maybe 10 people, including <laughs> us. <laughs> and Daniel got up and sang like there was a thousand, and I preached like there you was sure a thousand. And oh, man. But we've, we've gone through a lot. And Daniel, you have pastored churches. You've yeah. been assistant pastor. You've been worship leader. He's, yeah. he's been all over the place. <laughs> and I remember when I finally asked you to come here to Karis, I said, Daniel, I want you to grow old with me. Yes, I want you, you to did. stay here. And yep. I, I think that uh, we're pretty much on track. Yeah, I think we are. <laughs> Of working together or growing old together? Both. Yeah. <laughs> Both. You know, it's, it's inevitable. Everybody is growing older, right? I mean, even my grandson, who's now six and a half months old, is growing older. Sure. But my wife and I just agreed a long time ago. We just refuse to get old. Yeah, that's right. You're, We're just going to grow older. You're doing great. <laughs> my dad used to say, growing old beats the alternative. That's for sure. <laughs> 
unless you know Jesus. Yes, That's amen. right. So anyway, what have you got for us today? Well, just a very, I, I believe, a very practical word, very simple word mm -hmm. on Thanksgiving. You know, with all that's happening right now with the coronavirus, Man. there's so much craziness happening out there in the in the world system, and so many people are developing this attitude of ungratefulness. And mm -hmm. Paul told Timothy that this was going to be one of the signs of the last days, mm -hmm. that people were going to grow more and more unthankful. Yeah. Yep. And you know, if we're living by our circumstances, yep. that's a great way to get unthankful, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, all you're doing is watching the Corona news. There's that's not a right. lot of thankfulness put out. I mean, it's going to yeah. just cause you to enter into unbelief, mm -hmm. to fear. And we even feel that when we go out to the grocery store or wherever, you know, people are just so afraid right now. And so the world system, you can just sense how there's so much unthankfulness in our culture today. Mm -hmm. And people sometimes, even as believers, will say, well, I don't really have a whole lot to be thankful for. Mm -hmm. And so it's really just the power of perspective, isn't it? Yeah. When you realize what you've been forgiven of Amen. and you realize the covenant that we're living under and the promises that we have, oh my goodness. I mean, even if you have to just start with the fact that you're breathing, mm. the Bible says, let everything with breath praise the Amen. Lord. Yeah. Amen. So an attitude of gratitude becomes something that really becomes our DNA as believers. We should be so opposite of the world that when we show up with an attitude of gratitude and we've got thankfulness that's just marinating in our hearts, out of the abundance of our heart, this is gonna just rise up and flow out of us in rivers of living water. And it should look the opposite of what the world system is. And yet so many believers are being conformed to what's happening in our current culture today. So I just wanna uh, encourage you with a word out of First Thessalonians. Uh, let's start there with chapter five and verse 18, which is in a sense kind of a disturbing word in that it says, in everything, give thanks. Mm -hmm. and you're like, no, seriously? <laughs> in everything? <laughs> yes, in everything. Notice it didn't say for everything. Some people say, well, how, you know, if my, if my uh, aunt has cancer, how can I thank God for cancer? Well, you can't because cancer isn't from God, right? So it's not for everything that's happening in your life. It's in everything, mm -hmm. give thanks. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to say, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So, you know, a lot of times we struggle with, well, is it the, I don't know what the will of God is for my life. You know, Andrew's got such a great series on the will of God and finding it and fulfilling it. But sometimes we struggle with this idea of what is the will of God? Well, here is a great place to start. Amen. Thanksgiving is always an entrance yeah. place. It's always a place of beginning. And when you start with Thanksgiving, it says this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So Thanksgiving will work for you. It, it, it doesn't really change God. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever, but it will not only change you, but it will transform you. And transformation is what the gospel is all about. So what we're gonna to discover today is that uh, Thanksgiving is actually a place of agreement. It's a place of declaration. If we took the time, which I don't wanna really go into the Hebrew here with all of this, but the Hebrew word for Thanksgiving is a compound word that actually means grace and the confession or the acknowledgement of that grace. Mm. So think about if, there, if there's a voice to faith, I believe it's Thanksgiving. That's good. When we're really operating in the grace of God and we're receiving by faith what grace has already provided, then our voice that comes out from us is an attitude of gratitude. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we know what we've received. We, we're becoming aware more and more all the time, aren't we, of what we already have been given. Right. And so, Andrew, this is one of the things that I'm just really passionate about, and I know you know this, but you know, there's so many people that are still living under an old covenant mentality. Well, I was thinking, Daniel, as you were talking, that some people are gonna say, well, you're a praise and worship leader, so of course you're into Thanksgiving. <laughs> but that's not true. It's not Most true. Most praise and worship people are into begging and talking about woe is me and yeah. I'm mm -hmm. poor. 
And this is one of the things I love about what you've done with our praise and worship. Man, yeah. it glorifies God. It focuses you on the answer instead of the problem. And it really does, doesn't it? If you listen to the typical praise and worship music on most Christian radio stations, it'll depress you. Oh, man, I'm telling you, I was listening to it, an FM Christian radio station, just like you're talking about. Uh, one day I just had it on in my garage while I was working on some stuff on my truck. And uh, man, the songs that they were playing on that thing were so full of unbelief, I had to turn it off. Yeah. You know? I actually have yeah. turned to a secular station to listen to ungodly music thinking, at least I know this is ungodly. <laughs> it's not going to sneak up on me. That's right. But if you use the name of Jesus, sometimes you just let it in, but it I can know. be all unbelief. Yeah. Well, and so many people are living under this old covenant mentality of the presence of God on the outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, they're trying to get to the presence of God. And even, you know, scriptures like Psalm 100 uh, that have now been fulfilled through the new covenant. In verse four, it says, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. Well, you know, now today for us, we don't have to enter his gates anymore because the gates entered us. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's the good. way, the truth, and the life has already come into us. And like Paul told Timothy in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, don't you know that your body is now the temple yeah. of the Holy Ghost? Well, see, a lot of people really don't know. Yeah. They may have heard that scripture, but they don't really understand that their body has now become the very dwelling place of God. Amen. Acts says that, that God no longer dwells in temples made with hands. So there was a major shift that happened from the old covenant to the new covenant. So when we start learning how to live life inside out, then something radically changes because now, uh, spirit, soul, and body gets involved. It's not just our spirit man that has been redeemed, but thank God it has. But in our spirit is the spirit of God. As Andrew teaches this teaching so beautifully on spirit, soul, and body. I know many of you have heard this. If you have not heard it, I want to really encourage you to get a hold of that book on spirit, soul, and body, because it became really foundational for me in the area of worship ministry, really all my life, but especially worship ministry and healing, mm. because the three always work together. Mm -hmm. And so the Bible says that even though the outward man is growing older or perishing, the inward man, which includes our spirit and our soul and all that's involved with that is being renewed on a daily basis, not just from conference to conference, <laughs> not just from, you know, uh, every five years. No, from day to day, we show forth the salvation that God has put in us and our inward man is being renewed. Well, you know what? That'll affect your, your body. Mm -hmm. Amen. When your inward man is being renewed, that involves your attitude. And that's what I'm talking about today. You have to develop an attitude of gratitude to not be conformed to the ways of the world because the world will just suck you into its vortex of ungratefulness and unthankfulness and fear and unbelief and all the stuff that's in our culture today. So we as believers become so transformed that we stand out with our attitude of gratitude. Amen. You walk into a grocery store, you go into you know, a, a, a place to get gas for your, your truck or your car. And uh, you know, when you come, you show up with a smile. I mean, even something just that simple, mm -hmm. people are gonna wanna know what's going on with you. Of course, you know, if you have to have your Corona mask on, I nobody can see your smile. I was just thinking about that. How would people know if you're smiling? Right. <laughs> yeah, out, out of your eyes, you know. Yeah. Once, when a lady said to me just recently, I was in the grocery store picking something up at King Supers, and she said, oh, I can see you smiling with your eyes. <laughs> oh, really? So, you know, it, it literally will transform us from the inside out. But here's what's powerful about this. You know, what is in, in our soul is our will, our mind, our emotions. All of that is in the realm of our inner man, in the area of our soul, but also our motivation and even our imagination. Mm -hmm. And so the power of perspective becomes so important, especially right now, when there's so much negativity in our culture today, right? I mean, this coronavirus has, has just absolutely changed so many things in the natural realm. 
But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the kingdom that we've been given on the inside is unshakable. Even though things are shaken around us, what we have inside is greater than what's coming against us from the outside. And, uh, you know, you know, this scripture, but, but Jesus said this greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. Well, when we begin to realize that this gratitude that we have a a, a place in this gratitude that we can yield to that we've been given in the grace of God, you know, somebody said to me one time, I have a really hard time being grateful. Uh, could you just pray for me to be grateful? And I said, well, are you born again? And they said, yes. And I said, are you spirit filled? Yes. Well, I said, then you have the power to be grateful on a daily minute by minute basis. Remember the scripture? It said in everything, not just once a week when you show up to church or, you know, from event to event, but in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So what begins to happen is we begin to experience transformation from the inside out. And this attitude of gratitude, even though it's a very simple thing, will always be a place of entrance for us. Mm -hmm. You will find yourself entering into the greater things of God, the greater things of the kingdom of God through being thankful, whereas being unthankful will lead you to a completely opposite place. Mm -hmm. You know, David said in the Psalms, bless the Lord, O my soul and all that is within me. Well, he wasn't even born again like we are today. He didn't have the spirit of God living on the inside of him like we do today. And so if an old covenant man could say, bless the Lord, O my soul and all that is within me, how much more, how much more we as new covenant believers should be allowing the life of God that's in us to get us so full, to fill us so much that out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. Yeah. And Hebrews 13, 15 says that it's the sacrifice of praise that is the fruit of our lips. What? Giving thanks to his name. See, so thankfulness, I'm telling you, if we would just begin to embrace this attitude of gratitude, we would start to experience such transformation, not only for ourselves, but also through us for other people. Yeah. And you know, David also, you pointed out that he could bless the Lord, but he also said like in Psalms 51, take not your Holy Spirit from me yes. and all of these things. And people quote that, but he didn't have the promise that That's I'll right. never leave you nor forsake you. That's right. So David praised God even in bad situations, but there were things he did that we shouldn't emulate because we got a better covenant. We have a better you covenant. You teach on this a lot. And that's yeah. one of the things I love about your praise and worship. Amen. Your new covenant praise and worship, not old covenant. Yeah. And see, it's so different. You know, I spent so many years, Andrew, trying to, as a worship leader, trying to get people into the presence of God. I mean, I just, I, you know, and boy, the guy on the back row that had his arms folded like this, you know, he was my faith challenge. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, I'm going after that guy, you know, (laughs) and I'm going to get you in the presence of God. If it's the last thing I do. Well, you know what? It almost was. (laughs) (laughs) You didn't lead people into worship. You drove them there. That's right. You know why? Because we realize in new covenant Mm -hmm. that the presence of God is already in us. So as a leader, If we just create an atmosphere of Thanksgiving to start with, instead of trying to get into the Holy of Holies on a, you know, on a figurative basis, we already are living in that place of the Holy of Holies. I went into a church service one time. You and I both went to the same large church. Yes. And they were just worshiping God. And I mean, the presence of God was was awesome. It was a manifest presence of God. Yes. And right in the middle of the song service, the worship leader just stopped and started crying, oh God, come, Yes. come God, we invite you. And I thought, you know, from my perspective <laughs> that he just left. I know he never leaves us nor forsakes us, but right. it just threw cold water on the oh, whole I thing. Know. God was already there and yeah. he was begging him to come. Can well, you imagine bad. how weird it would be for us right now to be in this place and be like, oh, Carrie, I just wish you'd show up. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, I, I just- That's what we were know. saying before the Bible study started. <laughs> I, I, we got I, here with four <laughs> minutes to spare. And we were saying, coming. we sure pray that Daniel- Show, show up and here I did. <laughs> See your prayer worked. Amen. (laughs) But it's like, we're talking about the Lord, like he's not even in the room, Mm. you know, like, would you just come? He did 2000 years ago. 
And he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you, like you said. And so the importance of understanding new covenant worship for us, not just when we gather in a service, but on a daily basis yeah. is so important. And that's really, a, as you know, a passion of my heart in addition Absolutely. to healing and several other areas. But um, the reason why it is, is because God did this for us yeah. so that we could live life abundantly. You know, John 10, 10, he says he came to give us this kind of life. Well, I had somebody contact me yesterday and they're dealing with depression and, and uh, just severe anxiety to the point that they are literally crippled by it. Mm -hmm. Well, immediately that tells me that their thought life is radically off compared to what it should God. be. They're not praising God, yeah. right? And so again, a very familiar scripture, Proverbs chapter four and verse 23, it says to keep your heart with all diligence mm -hmm. for out of it flow the issues of life. And you know, this word for keep is the word guard or cultivate or watch over it. In other words, be aware. And here's the thing, when you get under stress, a lot of times what you wanna do is check out, right? Let me just do something to just check out, whether it's eating food or watching television or mm -hmm. you know whatever it is, let me just check out. Well, here's the deal. If you don't stay alert in times of stress, mm -hmm. you're not gonna get out if you try to check out. That's the right. thing that we wanna do is ramp up our Thanksgiving in those times of stress. And here's a, here's a key that I've discovered. First Corinthians 14 and verse 17 says that when we pray in the Holy Ghost, we give thanks Amen. well. Yeah. So even if you can't rationalize it with your understanding, mm -hmm. even if you can't you know, enter into something with, uh, with knowledge regarding Thanksgiving, Man, slip over in if you've got a prayer language, and if you don't, we can help you with that. But if you've got a prayer language, pray in the Holy Ghost because you give thanks well when you pray in the Holy Ghost. So when you think about giving thanks, that's one thing, but the Holy Ghost will help you to do it well. Amen. And when you shift over into the spirit like that, it gives your brain a chance to just you know go into neutral because you're not gonna pray with the understanding at that point, but your spirit, knows exactly what's going on. You're praying the mysteries of God. You're giving thanks well from your spirit man. And so it oftentimes give you, gives you a chance to get recentered. You know, when people are under a lot of stress, I heard somebody say one time uh, that it's like if you had uh, a bunch of markers, all of your markers just fall down in times of extreme stress. <laughs> you know, you, you just can't even, it's like, I don't even know my name. You know, well, it's so weird. Why, why would you forget something that is so basic? Because of stress. And stress right now is one of the killers that's happening in our culture today. Mm -hmm. People are so stressed out, they think that in order to live quality life, they've gotta live on medication mm -hmm. for the rest of their life. And I'm telling you, God has a better way. Mm -hmm. It's a better covenant with better promises, and he's got a better way for us to be living. And it starts with Thanksgiving. Developing that attitude of gratitude becomes so important and yielding to the Spirit of God to where we can begin to pray in the Holy Ghost and get edified, get built up. Instead of having a heart that's overloaded, we actually get a heart that's filled with the Spirit of God. And again, out from the inside to the outside will flow. And isn't it interesting that out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. Amen. See, our mouth and our heart are directly connected. That's right. Our faith and our confession, you know, it's directly connected. So listen to what's coming out of your mouth. Yeah. If you're wondering where you are, what's going on in your life, in your heart, listen to what's coming out of your mouth because that'll be a really good indicator of what's happening in your heart. Hit your yep. thumb with a hammer and you'll find out you'll what's find in your heart. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's the first thing I do is anytime something hurts or something, yes. I'm like, Jesus. Yes. Jesus. And other people, not quite. Yeah. So. <laughs> that is so true. It's those times of stress, isn't yeah. it? Those times of pressure. And we often think that the pressure creates the problem. It doesn't really. Mm -hmm. the, the pressure just simply reveals mm -hmm. what's already there. Yep. And so when you're in the midst of a storm, when you're in the midst of a challenge, a, an emotional storm, a mental storm, you know, that is not the time to try to check out. Do you know that the average person watches five hours of television a day? That's amazing. And, and over a period of time, uh, I believe it's within a year's time, you'll have watched 21,000 commercials. Now think about that. If, if, you're, you know, if, if you watch the Hallmark Channel or 
uh, any of these channels, they're kind of designed for, um, I would say, older people, like the Weather Channel. <laughs> 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 or if you're one of those people that watches golf, you know, I'm telling you, you will have, especially here in America, I don't know how it is around the rest of the world, but here in America, you will have watched so many prescription drug That's commercials. True. And those prescription drugs all tell you that you should have whatever it is that they're trying to sell to you in order to have quality life. Yeah. See, that is so contrary to the gospel. But if we don't know the new covenant that we're in and the better promises that we have, we might just slip over into that. You know, I think I need that in order to have quality life. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Jamie and I, we watch all of these old folks stuff, uh, Andy Griffith show and stuff. Yeah, they, we love that too. And they just advertise drugs the whole yeah, time. All and, the time. We watched an Aladdin movie, I think it was, or something, and they were advertising toys. Oh, wow. And I said to Jamie, I said, man, this is so refreshing that they aren't showing old folks doing <laughs> drugs. Right? right? I guess we watch the old folks stuff. I think we do. A lot of those Andy Griffith shows and stuff like that, we love them too. Who's They're, Andy Griffith? Yeah, right. I'm I know. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did that in my Boy. class one day. I was referring to somebody from 1985 or 1986. I said, do you guys remember that song that was really popular back in 85? One of my students said, uh, we weren't born yet. <laughs> So how to feel old in a hurry. Youth is wasted on young people. <laughs> One day I was uh, teasing. I said, you know, for me to, I, I was confessing something over and over and over again, and it almost turned into a rap. You know, I was saying, I was, I was saying, Lord, I cast my care on you. And I, it turned into this, I, I don't care. I'm not going to care. I cast my care because you care, <laughs> you know? And I started saying it, it, it turned into kind of a, a rap kind of thing. And I told my students, for me to rap would be like Pat Boone rapping. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they went, Who, who's Pat Boone? Oh, man. <laughs> but, you know, I remember a story you told about being in one of those machines and, it, and the sound. Yes, that the you MRI. Wrote a song that went I with. did. In fact, it's in the studio <laughs> right now getting produced. So, uh, yeah, I'm telling you, the, the song of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the life of the Lord that is all inside, God's intended for it to fill us up and flow out of us. Sure. And it will be transformational, not just to you, but here's the really exciting part. The gospel is good news. Amen. And man, if there was ever a time in our culture today when we needed to hear good news, it's now. Yeah. And what's in you, God is designed to come out from you. And you know, here's the deal. I really believe this with all my heart that we are about to see the greatest harvest that we have ever seen. Amen. Uh, the, you know, we say it all the time around here, but it's because it's true. The best is yeah. yet to come. You know, Jesus said to the disciples in John 4, their, their perspective was just on what was immediate, right? They were looking at those natural fields of, of wheat or whatever it was. And Jesus said, don't say. See, listen, don't say there's yet four months and then the harvest comes. He said, the harvest is here. The, the shortage isn't in the harvest. Yeah. The shortage is in the laborers. Those who are going to not just sit around and, and sit on their blessed assurance, <laughs> but those are, who are going to take seriously the commission of, of the great commission of the Lord and go Go into the harvest field. These signs will follow those who believe. They shall go. And so, man, I'm telling you, we are in for the greatest time. I believe even, Andrew, I was thinking about this the other day, speaking of gratitude. Um, you know, when the Spanish pandemic hit in 1918, uh, I think I've heard recently that there were over 50 million, and it could be even more, people that died during that pandemic. Mm -hmm. Well, do you know, it was just a short time after that, that the healing revivals all started. You think back to the 1920s and 1930s, yeah. 1940s, you know, the, the healing revivals that we all love and talk about came as a result of what the enemy intended for destruction and for harm. I hadn't made that connection, but that's right. And I believe now with this coronavirus, man, we are ripe for harvest right now. We've got to get our eyes on the Lord. Amen. Keep our eyes on what matters. Even though we haven't been this way before, Jesus has. And instead of getting our eyes on what's new, let's keep our eyes on what's true. Amen. 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 And what we know is Thanksgiving is always a place to start. 
in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. So listen, I know there's some of you who are going through some stuff right now, some tough stuff, some family issues, some relationship challenges, maybe some financial challenges. Listen, life is full of challenges. Jesus said in this, in this world, you will have trouble. You will have tribulation, but what? but be of good cheer. See, here it is again. Your attitude of gratitude will cause transformation in you that will then flow through you to the glory of God. And you're going to see harvest in a whole different way than you would have before if you just stay in that place of limitation and Amen. fear. Amen. And that's one of my favorite things. That's one of the keys to my life is yeah. praising God, being thankful. And I, I know you definitely see that in you. I know you stirred people up. I want you to lead them in a prayer. Just look Amen. at that camera and maybe Amen. to seal this with praying. For Amen. Amen. Father, we just declare in the name of Jesus right now that we refuse to be conformed to the ways of the yes, world. Lord. We know that we get transformed by the word of God. And we thank you, Lord God, that it's just not just educational or informational, but Lord, you want us to experience transformation. Amen. We receive your benefit, Lord God, the benefits of our salvation that are so enormous. Yes, and we say, Lord God, you are greater than whatever is trying to come against us. Greater are you in us and you are greatly to be praised. Mm -hmm. So Lord, for those that are, are just, you know, stirred up to the point of they've recognized that, you know what, I have been in a place of ungratefulness. I've been a place of unthankfulness. Lord, we just repent right now in Jesus name. And we say we refuse to be conformed to the culture, to the ways of the world any longer in this area as well. And Lord God, thank you for the grace that we already have on the inside to be able to be grateful. We lift our voices now and we declare that that voice of faith, that voice of thanksgiving will not be stopped. Amen. But Lord, what we're hearing in the quiet place, we're going to shout out on the rooftops. That's right. And Lord, we declare that you are good and your mercy amen. endures forever. Amen. In Jesus name, amen, amen. and amen. amen. That's awesome. Man, that's awesome. Amen. Man, that blessed me. Praise God. You know, I know many of you have been stirred up. If you want somebody to pray with you specifically over a specific situation, we've got people standing by at our phones right now, 719-635-1111. And we would love to pray with you. They've also got materials. Daniel has what? We have a couple of uh, praise uh, CDs from yeah. Karis. Mm -hmm. And did you write that song on the best is yet to come? I did, yeah. Man, that's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. That's one of, on one of their. So anyway, it's, it's really good. So would you Amen. get any questions? Yes, we got some really good questions. So Barbara on Facebook said, can you advise on toxic thoughts? Toxic thoughts. Yes. Here's the thing about toxic thoughts. You can't just suppress them. No. You know, we, we, we do these crazy things where we just think if I just deny it or if I just pretend it's not there or if I just stuff it down, mm -hmm. you know, it'll go away. No, it won't. It'll be like a volcano. And when you're under pressure, that's what's going to erupt because you've not exchanged those thoughts for God's thoughts. Sure. God's thoughts and your thoughts are not the same until you get into the word of God. And the word of God is what will cause transformation in your thought life. Your thought life can be so transformed that as you walk with God uh, for a period of time, you'll look back at your life and say, I can't, I'm not even the same person. That's, right. That's exactly right. Because God's thoughts, when they become your thoughts, will cause transformation. And that's the greatest way to get rid of toxic thoughts is just to replace them with God's new thoughts. That's good. You don't suppress them, you replace them. That's, That's it. Right. Amen. So Ruthie asks on chat, she says, what are practical steps to develop an attitude of gratitude? And how would you find the good in everything when sometimes things clearly aren't from God? Yeah. And that's such a great question, isn't it? Because we talked about that, not giving thanks for everything, but in everything. Yeah. So I would say developing an attitude of gratitude begins, you know, there was a movie called What About Bob years ago. <laughs> that's one of our favorites. We love that movie. And he talks about in the movie, baby steps, right? Just, just baby steps, take a baby step. Well, you know, here's the thing. When you develop this habit of, of gratitude, mm -hmm. just begin with baby steps. Start where you are 
are right now. Don't try to get to some place that you're not. Just begin today with an attitude of gratitude for what you can be thankful for. And as you do that, it's like dominoes. One thing will lead to another. This is why Psalm 100 and verse four that I mentioned earlier is a progression from the old covenant. Well, we can take that now into the new covenant and realize that's what's already on the inside of us. So once we start to become thankful, then we're going to automatically enter into the courts with praise. In other words, our emotions and what's inside of us, our mind, our thought life, we're going to just go from thanksgiving to praise. And before you know it, we're going to be so transformed that we will be in a completely different place instead of depressed and you know, all that, but start where you are and start taking baby steps, develop things like I'm thankful that I'm breathing right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank I, God for air. Thank it's God free. for air to breathe. It's free. They don't charge for that. Amen. <laughs> and in Colorado, thank God for clean air. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, you know I, I spend time looking at tree. I, I mean, our trees are budding out and I'm oh. looking at those leaves and thanking, thanking God, God for this them. This is so awesome. Yeah. That he thought of all of this and it's so beautiful, those leaves and the way that they bud out. And you start thanking God for little things. Yes. Yeah. And it's just like you say, you start where you are and then the bigger things come. Yeah. That's good. And it's amazing how you can just become marinated in Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. As you start yielding to this, it just becomes the way of life. That's good. Yeah. So Rachel on Facebook says, when we are feeling ungrateful and catch ourselves feeling and embarrassing, embarrassingly acting that way, how do we bring ourselves back to being thankful again? Well, again, it's just centering your mind on, on the things that really matter. You know, there's so much craziness trying to take up space in your brain <laughs> and just don't allow it. You know, when you find these other things trying to move in and take over, you know, on, on a different example here, but I'll share this really quickly out of the gospel of Luke. Uh, we have this story that Jesus tells about the man who was um, filled with uh, or had a demonic issue and uh, the demon was cast out. And then it, uh, Jesus said, and then he went looking for seven more to return to the house that he had come from. Why? Because they didn't fill once the house was empty from the demonic activity. They didn't take time to fill that house with what they should have filled it with. And see, that's you. You're, you're that house that God says, no, don't let your heart just be empty. Out of, out of your heart flow the issues of life. So you can't afford to let wood, hay and stubble take up space in your brain. You need to with gold and what really matters, speaking of the word of God and the things of the spirit of God, because if we don't fill it with that, the world's going to try to come in and, and fill it with itself. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my good friends, Bob, uh, Bob Nichols, he's been through a lot of hard times. I mean, yeah, it would has. have broken most people. And yet one of the things he teaches is he says, thank God things are as good as they are. Mm. They could be worse. Oh man. And you know, when we were in, the, both of us came out of the Baptist church, you were a Baptist yes. pastor's son. Yep. One of the songs that we sang was uh, count your many blessings, mm -hmm. name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Yeah. And that was the way that we dealt with things is when things got bad, there was all, it could have always been worse. Always. I mean, you see some, you know, you're complaining about neuropathy in your feet until you see somebody that doesn't have any feet. And all of a sudden wow. you, you yeah. think, thank you, Jesus. Isn't and that I've the got truth. Some. And yeah. so this is one of the things that you do is things could always be better, but things could always be worse. And you need to put things in perspective. Yeah. The power of perspective. And I think that this is what praise and worship does for me. It's probably mm -hmm. one of the dominant things yeah. is you can't keep your mind focused on what the doctor says and yeah. thinking yeah. about the funeral right. and praise God. Praise will make you look on the positive side. Either you're going to get healed or it'll make you start thinking about in heaven, I'm going to yeah. have a mansion and all of this will be <laughs> over. But praise makes you focus yeah. on the positive instead yeah. of the negative. Yeah. Yeah, it's such a powerful statement, isn't it? You know, medically they have proven now, I don't know how they prove it, but it's been proven that f uh, fear and gratitude cannot be happening at the same time. Oh, really? So okay. when, you're, when you're grateful, fear exits. Yeah. That's good. But when you're not grateful, it's like a, a vacuum. You know, yeah. fear can just come in and try to take over. Well, that's like what she's talking about here with mm -hmm. these thoughts. You know, we've got to take time to fill our life with the Word of God. It doesn't just happen by your Bible sitting on your coffee table. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
And you know, people think that if things were better, I would be thankful. And that's not true. It's not true, is it? Did you know, I could spend a lot of time talking about what God has done just, you know, since you've been with us. Yeah. Daniel, you've seen God do. Uh, oh, amazing it's things. It's amazing things. We now have $126 million worth of assets in wow. the last 10 years. And yet I find myself thinking about what I don't have. Uh -huh. I need student housing. I need this. And I have to force myself to keep looking sure. at what God has done instead of what he hasn't done. So yeah. it's not true that if things were just better, I would automatically praise mm -hmm. God. It's right. a choice. It's yeah. a decision. It really is. In fact, this morning, uh, driving up uh, to, you know, the address here, One Innovation Way, and you know the headquarters for Andrew Walmack Ministries now. I, I, again, I just can't get over this view. I, I come out to the parking lot and look out over the beautiful mountain vista Amen. that this property sits on, mm -hmm. and it's like, look what the Lord has done. Yeah. Wow. And yet I have honestly, in the last week, had my mind stayed on something else and drove in and I saw that view and I thought, you know, God, I hadn't even praised you today for what you've done. Wow. I had that thought come to me wow. that I was focused on what I didn't have instead of what I do have. That's it's, awesome. It's an effort. Yeah. It's like gravity. Yeah. Gravity always exists. Now you can overcome it with the power and uh, the power of thrust and lift and sure. you fly, but you don't turn off gravity. No. There's always negative. We live in a fallen world. There's That's always right. going to be something oh, bad and you have to choose to praise God. Yeah. It's never going to be just automatic. That's good. You know, when you said a little bit ago, it could always be worse. You know, I think that's one of the principles in James where he said, count it all joy. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're in the midst of these challenges, sometimes it's not fun, is it? You know, it's not joyful. It's not happy, happy, you know, but what do we do? We've got the grace. We've got the ability to count it all joy. So even in those adverse situations, it's like when Paul and Silas were beaten and thrown in prison. I mean, here they are at midnight singing praises to God after being beaten. You know, I think most of us would have been like, uh, obviously we missed that vision. You know? <laughs> Can we do have a redo, have a takeover? <laughs> and you know, this has just been Memorial Day weekend and Jamie and I are both history buffs. So we've been watching the History Channel, World War II movies. There's a mini series on Grant that we've watched the last couple of nights. And seeing, you know, 20,000 people dead in wow. one battle. Mm. And I went through Vietnam and I was shot at. And on my 21st birthday, we had 21 direct hits on my bunker. And I saw bodies piled up 10 and 15 high, but oh, I never man. saw stuff like that. And so it's always worse. You yeah. can always find something worse. And it's made me thankful mm -hmm. to go yeah. back and see the number of people that have died for our freedom and stuff. And it's made yeah. me mm -hmm. thankful. and. Amen. I tell you, there is so much to be thanking God for. So much. I tell you, it's a good thing I'm not God, because if I was I God yeah. and you see <laughs> these people griping because something's not going their way, I'd mm -hmm. just drop kick them off in the <laughs> space. Amen. Crispy critters. I'd turn them into a pile of ashes. <laughs> but God is so gracious. Yes. And we, He's done so much Amen. for us. And we've got all these great things, and yet people are just focusing <laughs> on what they don't have and griping and complaining and oh, missing man. all of the awesome things. It's so self centered, isn't yeah. it? it is. yeah. right. Well, they're always comparing themselves to other people. And that, right. I think that's a big thing with a lack of thankfulness. It's like, yeah, my life is fine, but I want that. And so and what yeah. they don't know is those people that they're envying are miserable behind yep. the scenes and mm -hmm. doing drugs to survive and they mm -hmm. can't hold their marriage together. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Lori on Facebook asked this, is it okay to ask the Holy Spirit to fill us continually every day? Mm -hmm. Many teach this. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the, you know, the way that I would say it is yield to what's already there. But absolutely, you know, um, the reason we need to be filled, you know, in fact, Ephesians 5, 18 and 19 talk about this. Be being filled with the Spirit of God is really what the Greek says here. And so we're in this continual state of being filled. And it's really, it's, it's about you yielding to the Spirit of God. So I, when I teach on this with my students, I just say, how, how full do you want to be? You know, Andrew's got a great book on, on you know, staying full mm -hmm. uh, you know, of the Spirit of God. So if you haven't read that, I really want to encourage you to get a hold of that book. It'll absolutely help you. But here's the thing. When we are in this state of being filled, the reason we need to be being filled is because we leak. 
<laughs> right? I mean, all the stuff that happens to life, we can just, you know, just let it come right out of us in, in our thought life, in our, in our will. Sometimes we try to willpower our way through something. Man, don't do that. You've got self-control. You've got all the fruit of the Spirit of God living on the inside of you, according to Galatians chapter 5. And so from the inside out, we're going to be able to conquer and persevere and actually overcome. But it doesn't happen just by going into, you know, que sera, sera. You've got to purposely stay filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. Let me explain that just a little bit, that your spirit is constantly filled. It never fluctuates, but we aren't only spirits. You've got a soul. That's your emotional part and then your physical body. And it leaks and it's the part that doesn't keep their mind stayed upon That's the it. Lord right. and stuff. So it's not ever that you lose the spirit of God, but never. you lose your awareness mm -hmm. and you Sensitive. lose the fullness mm -hmm. of it in your emotions and in your physical body. Yeah. So it's like drawing it out. You've got this well there, but you got to draw that out. Yeah, you really do. And especially during times of stress, you know, these are the things that really separate us as believers from the ways of the world. I mean, yeah. it's terrible stress that you have to stay home with your mate that you're committed oh to. My goodness, and you have to right? live with your kids and people are stressed. <laughs> tell tell real quickly about the other day, you, you said something about how people are actually committing suicide and and their, their relationship between their husband and wife is so bad. Mm -hmm. What was it you said on that? I don't remember. But, oh, my but, goodness. But to think that, you, yeah. you know, I want to live with you for the rest of my life, and then you have to stay home yeah. with them, and it's causing stress. It's showing that things haven't been too good. You've just been <laughs> avoiding the problem. That's it. Yep. And even parents with their kids, yeah. you know, some of them are just... Especially since we had to homeschool. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie's still there. You and I. I'm, I'm still there. We've been delivered from that. We, That's right. I'm going to send my kids to you. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm not having the empty nest syndrome. Jamie and I are praising God. Um, we are too. You're thankful. Yes. We're thankful. <laughs> Uh, we're out of time is what we are. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's been, that was that's awesome. That's been great. We appreciate you. Amen. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, Daniel also runs our healing school that meets every Thursday at yeah. 1 uh, p.m. Mountain Time. And you've been doing this for, what, eight years? Nine years now. Nine years. Yeah. And I'll be teaching tomorrow, actually. So. And that's also yeah. another live stream that we do. So yes. we actually have seven live streams a week yeah. that we do. And you can uh, not only tune into that live, but they're archived. And, and Daniel has of, often said that if you go back and look at eight years, nine years worth of healing school archives, it's I impossible dare you to, for you to stay sick. <laughs> Well, if you guys need prayer, 719-635-1111. That is our prayer uh, ministers. They're ready to pray for you. Also, we mentioned Andrew's book, Staying Full of God. That's an yes. amazing book, his book on spirit, soul, and body. So these would be some great resources. And then also you have a book on praise. Uh, yeah, yes. the effects of yes. praise. Effects of I've praise. got a book for everything. Yeah, you do. <laughs> so call us. We would love to. We would love to be able to refer you to those resources. So God bless you, and we will see you tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Um, we're going to have one of our guest ministers, Rob Vinsky, our director of Australia. He's going to be ministering to you, so it's going to be awesome. 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 God bless you. Amen. Have a great day.